of courage to put on a show, particularly when you've never produced one before. We at Crystal Theatre want to give you all the tools that you need and to tell you that, yes, it takes courage, but you can do it. So the show I'm going to talk about today is The Snow Queen. I wrote this show quite a while ago, back in the early 1990s, I'm guessing 1991, and I was going through my literature-based phase at this time. So I researched the actual 56-page Hans Christian Andersen story, and that is what this show is based on. So if you're doing this in conjunction with a school, I'd recommend reading that full version of the story, not the short little picture version that you can often find. Um, what I also did was read a book, which at the moment I forget the name of, but it was written by a psychologist who analyzed Snow Queen at the various stages of adolescence. And therefore, all of the songs and the little vignettes that we go through are reflective of these various stages of adolescence. The theme of the show is friendship, loyalty, and the power of one pure heart. That's the ideas that you want to emphasize. So when you're staging it, this is a more serious show as opposed to some of the comic version shows that we have like Cosmic Nightingale or Aesop's Fables. The show, the way it's laid out at the moment, can have songs deducted from it. Through the years, I always add and enlarge the shows due to the t high talent level that we receive at Crystal Theater. But you also have the option of saying, I'm not going to do the Crow song, Security, or the girl that I've got doing the Crow's fiance is not that strong a singer and doesn't want to sing, so we'll just use the dialogue between her and the Crow's fiance. There's a number of that type of song in the show, and you can see that for yourself. This show does not require a big set. I've seen people do it with fancy sets. Uh, recently, they did a production in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, where they had built a whole, almost like a castle with a wall conjoining the two towers. And the sorcerer was up in one tower and the Snow Queen was up in the other tower. We've also done it where we've just used a platform or a box for the Snow Queen to stand on. A lot of times you can use a black box, literally black box theater, black floor, black background with black boxes to stand on. The one thing that you may want to add is the grandmother house. And we keep that, we at Crystal Theater have what we call three stages. We have uh, the main stage and two smaller stages attached to the ends. Since we have no backstage, we have no place for sets. So we move scenery and change things around by having a little scene going on one of the smaller stages while we set up the next version on stage. You can do the same thing. Many people use the background CD in their performances. If you do not have access to an orchestra, or, or uh, by orchestra I mean three or four pieces, you can use these background tapes very successfully. Costumes, we like that fairy tale look. No matter where you are, you're going to find those full skirts, layers, many layers, the peasant type blouses, in this show, you have winter and you have summer scenes, so you can adjust for those as well. When we're doing a large cast version, we like to include the numbers like Winter on the River, where the whole cast gets to sing. The finale also is extremely effective with a large group of singers. We recommend that you double cast the parts. That means Gerda, Kai are played by two different people, not on the same night. You have different performances. That way you're covered for illness and for, uh, it sets up a friendly competition between the two actors. And I don't mean that in a negative way. You should never ever say, oh, well look at so-and-so, she's doing it so much better than you are. You don't want to do that. That sets up a negative spiral. Instead, what you'll find is they'll be inspired by each other's performance. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for kids to say, oh, let's perform for each other, and they start to get ideas. They learn what it is to be an actor. They learn what a different interpretation is. How else will you know that unless you see the same part performed by different people? It 
it builds their awareness as an actor. The Snow Queen role is actually a smaller role than Gerda. Gerda and Kai are the actual bigger leads of the show. Gerda has the long adventure. She's the one going on the quest to save her friend Kai, who she thinks has been kidnapped by the Snow Queen. In our version, he has gone willingly with the Snow Queen to find the secret to eternity. That is his quest. So it's a double quest. Many times, the Snow Queen is sung by an adult. So if you have a fabulous soprano um, in, your, in your community, this would be the place to put her in. And sometimes they'll have the sorcerer also done by a male adult, but could be a female as well. We've, had, we've done it both ways. An interesting idea that I saw recent, in a recent production was the narrator, Hans Christian Andersen, which is strictly an acting part, the director incorporated him into the whole show. So he was there reading the story, but at the same time he would, he would suddenly put himself into a scene and be taking notes. Or he would become a robber in the robber scene after, after announcing it. That was a fascinating interpretation to me and one that we did not start out with. Uh, in conclusion, the key is to do the show in a heartfelt manner, in a sincere, honest depiction. The kids really relate to the material and the audience relates to the purity that comes across. The secret to eternity is love.